Do you want to get a higher passe? Then you need to stop just working on hamstring strength. A common misconception in the dance world and a correction that I hear thrown out a lot is work on strengthening your hamstrings more if your passe is too low or misplaced. Today in this video, I'm going to dive into what you should be doing, how to identify which weakness is causing you to have a low passe or which imbalance is causing you to have one, and some key tips to improving your passe. So before we get started, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and make sure you share this with another dancer if you find it helpful. This YouTube version will include the anatomical references, instructions, but will not be a follow along exercise version. If if you'd like the full exercise follow along version, you can join the unlimited membership of the Veronica K platform for cross training and get on there and then follow me step by step in my turns course. Let's quickly talk about what you need and supplies for this routine today. You're going to need a yoga block. You're going to also need a looped resistance band or a band that you can tie into a loop. Mine is heavy, but you can use anywhere from light to heavy based on how strong your hamstrings and your quads are. You're also going to need either a super loops band or a yoga stretch band. This is a very thick band that is thick this way, very hard and thin this way. You're gonna need this for the stretching portion. You also need a mat on your floor to make sure that all of your bones are safe and you're comfortable when you're performing the exercise. I highly recommend this mat. It is absolutely fantastic and you can get it for 5% off if you go down in my description. And if you need any of these items at all, you can grab them from my Amazon storefront. And yes, I do make a small commission, so thank you in advance. So let's figure out what's wrong with your passing. When you're dancing, if your passe is very low and your knee is actually ramping down, so your hip and knee are creating this slope downward, if you're telling your student to contract your hamstring more, there's actually not much room before there is an end point in their joint. This is not going to allow them to get a higher passe by just telling them to contract their hamstring. The problem here is that their hip flexor psoas major is probably not lifting the leg up and stabilizing it enough so that they can actually lift the leg. So if your knee is going down in a downward slope like this, you need to work on strengthening the psoas and the hip flexors so that you can actually have your passe at that 90 degree line, knee to hip being on the same level. And this is where we want our passe to be ideally. Now, more skilled and advanced professionals are gonna try to aim for a higher passe, but we never want our passe to be knee higher than hip. That's just not something that is an attractive aesthetic. So a couple things that you need to keep in mind is that there are end ranges of your joint that are just simply going to be impossible to overcome. If there is a bone on bone end point with your joint, then you cannot stop that bone on bone from hitting and making your passe impossible to get higher. There are also muscular stopping points that you have to keep in mind too. If your calf is very large and your hamstring is also very large and you're an instructor or a student who's working on the higher passe, you may get to a point where your calf muscle and your hamstring touch and that's just simply how high your passe is going to be at that point. So long as it's turned out, your feet are appropriately aligned and your knee and your hip are in the same plane, then that's your passe and you should just accept it and be proud. Not everyone is going to be able to achieve a super, super high passe. It's going to be based on your anatomy and how your muscles are working together as well. So what if your knee and your hip are in the same plane, but you're having problems connecting your passe to your leg or your passe is still feeling really low? Well, then if that's the case, then we need to talk about a couple things. One, your quadricep muscle. If it's very tight and used to being an extension all the time, or maybe you even have hyperextension in your knees, it's gonna be harder for you to bend like this and you probably have an overtonicity or a lot of tone here and some weakness in the hamstrings. So making sure if your hip flexors are doing fantastic and your knee and hip are in line and it's all good there, if it's still droopy, 
then you need to work on the hamstring strength at that point and the quadriceps being stretched to get your leg up. Now let's see the exercises that you're actually going to do to get the results so that your passe is in the appropriate position. First and foremost, your core has to be engaged and you have to have proper alignment of the trunk and spinal area as well as the hips. And if you don't, then it's like building a building on the most unstable foundation in the world. You're gonna have bad balance. You're gonna have a hard time turning. You're gonna have a hard time with turnout and pretty much anything in ballet. So the first exercise we're gonna perform is working on your psoas major strength. And I'm going to show you how to do it. And if you want that follow along version, then make sure you join the Turns and Balance course on the platform. So we're going to be in an interior tilt here. We're gonna place our hand below our navel and exhale as we move into a posterior tilt. <sighs> now a posterior tilt is like that over tucking position of your pelvis. And I don't want you to stay there. You're gonna relax slightly here and find neutral. So neutral is where your shoulder to your hip are in line. So try it again, start anterior, and now try to go to neutral giraffe. Now, in this position of neutral, you're going to pop your toes up towards your nose. You're gonna exhale out, place your hand here because I still want you to feel that contraction of your transverse abdominis. And I want you to go up with the knee to the ceiling, as close to the body as possible, you're not reaching away. So up, and slowly back down. Really making sure you're staying tall on that standing leg. Again, exhale, up, and back down. This is the first exercise I want you to make sure you're doing. Really having a hard time and you're like, I can't do this without like doing all this compensatory movement. Face your bar, foot in front, exhale, and back down. I do not want you to push off with the toes. That's not going to work the proper muscle groups to improve your pass. Moving on to taking it to second. Now, we're going to take our second position here in this kneeling position. I want you to make sure that you're externally rotated to what your hip is actually able to do. So if you're all the way to the side like this and you feel everything is kind of turning forward and you're arching your low back, you've got your leg too far to the side. Move it forward, find the position where you're able to hold a neutral spine, place either one or two hands on the bar, Flex the toes back again, and you're going to think of knee is coming to the armpit. So it's coming close to the body, not reaching away. And you're gonna take an exhale. Transverse is gonna be active. <sighs> close to your body, turn it out, bring it down. Yes, that's not the position we go to in passe, but it's strengthening the psoas major enough so that you can lift it up, place it where you need to be with ease. Next, we're gonna to go to the hamstring drills where we're actually gonna work on strengthening the hamstring and we're going to work on some external rotation of the hips as well because we need to be able to externally rotate from the appropriate places. And then we are also going to work on lengthening the quadriceps and the hip flexor. Grab a looped band or an open one you can tie and also grab one that you can stretch with and hold the stretch and also grab your yoga block. First, I wanna make sure you could do a clam appropriately. Clam is an exercise that I see dancers making errors with a lot, and I wanna help you fix it. So lie down, and if you're bringing your knees to your chest like this, and opening from this point, this is not what I want you to do for clams. You're gonna take your knees, and they're gonna line up with your hips. So you're taking it behind you more. And then from there, I want you to place your hand behind your hip so you're feeling for that ball of the hip joint. Put it in the back there. And then I want you to keep this placement, nice long spine, and you're gonna go exhale, only up into the point where you feel this muscle back here, open and pop, and then you're gonna low down. And then you come up again, exhale, and then lower it down nice and slow. So this is how I want you to do your clams. This is going to kick in the rotators that you want to kick in, and you're not gonna put strain on your iliopsoas. 
Next, let's focus on the hamstrings. You're gonna place the band around your ankles and you're gonna straighten those legs out. You can lie flat with your tummy down or you can prop yourself up if it's more comfortable. Just for the purposes of me wearing a microphone, I will not be lying flat and muffling my voice. So I'm gonna be propped up here. So I'm gonna take my legs parallel. That's very important. Do not turn out. We are trying to isolate the parallel fibers in the hamstrings. So we're going to take our leg and we're gonna bend it back without turning it out. Hold, 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 and then slowly lower it back down. Again, bending. Hold and slowly lowering it back down. Now I do not like hamstring curl machines. I would rather have you doing it with bands because you get the concentric and eccentric a little differently. And also it allows you to do one leg at a time and there's less room for injury. Next, we're gonna take the yoga block. We're gonna place it between our thighs and we're gonna have it between the knees horizontally. I want you to lean back. You're going to find your core neutral, so don't touch down like this. Lift up, keep the spine long, and you're gonna press the yoga block in while you exhale. So you're going to squeeze the knees and relax. Four counts here. Squeeze the knees, exhale, and relax. Now it's time for us to do some stretching, open up the hip, and make you feel like you are really making some progress with that posture. Place your knee on the block and lie on your stomach. You're gonna grab your band, and if this is too much for you to do, if you're starting to compensate and you really feel uncomfortable with the knee elevated, just take the block away because that's fine. You can just do knees together on the ground. Now, you're going to take your band and you're gonna bring it this way and hold it over your shoulder and flex your foot back. We're trying to keep our knees together as much as we can and hold this quad stretch. And we're gonna push against the band. One, two, three, four, relax. Repeat it. One, two, three, four, relax. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four, relax. We're doing one more. One, two, three, four, relax and hold. All right, let's switch to the other side. Bend the knee first, bring this over your shoulder, and push into the band. One, two, three, four, relax. Push, one, two, three, four, relax. Trying to bring the heel closer to the buttocks each time. One, two, three, four, relax. Last time, one, two, three, Four, relax. Next stretch, we're gonna open up here with the deep rotators. We're gonna cross our leg like this over crossing the passe position. And then we're going to lie down on the floor and just open the knee to the floor here. Make sure your core is in neutral. You can engage your core here. I don't want you to be arched so that you can put something under your back. So make sure the back is touching the floor and just open up this overcrossed passe and hold. And then go ahead and lower it down to switch to the other side. Keep the opposite hip on the floor and think of this knee opening down to the floor. Breathing. Very 
very good and come out of it. For the final stretch here, we're gonna find a piece of wall and then back your knee up to the point where you feel like it is comfortable for you to lift up straight. Now, your knee may not be all the way bent in. If you have tighter quads, you're gonna have to scoot away from the wall a little bit more. Now, take this leg up and through, and we're going to lift ourselves up. And if you need to brace yourself on the wall just to keep balance, that's also fine. The next thing you're gonna do, once you're able to be all the way up and erect, you're gonna post your tilt and tuck your tailbone under. You'll immediately feel an increased stretch through the front of your hip. Stay here in this posterior tilt. And come out of it and then gently reposition yourself here so that you can bring the other leg through. Again, you're gonna find that upright position and tuck the tailbone under until you can feel the stretch in the front and then hold. Arm is just on the wall for balance and you can take anything you want to hold onto, just making sure that you're in the proper pelvic position. and then slowly come out of it. I hope this routine has helped you learn how to create your passe at the optimal height for your body. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I upload at least twice a month. Tag a friend, like, comment, share. Do it all, make sure you spread the good word and help other dancers improve like you. If you want the full routine and more information on how to improve your pirouettes and your turns, then make sure you sign up for my Turns and Balance course included in the unlimited membership on the Veronica K cross-training platform. Great work today, dancers, and I'll see you next time.